From the depths of classical physics rose quantum field theory, a powerful framework that unifies our understanding of particles and forces at the most fundamental level. However, quantum field theory is often perceived as a complex and challenging subject and to master it is difficult. Considering its mathematical formalism, abstract concept, physical interpretation, wide range of physics concepts, well, it is a wild beast to tame. In this video, I am going to make this challenge easy. Starting from the evolution of quantum field theory, the fundamental concepts, what are the mathematical and conceptual prerequisites, which books to read, how to study, this video is your single guide to understand the most vital and most important concepts ranging from the very basic to the advanced level. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel. Welcome to this fresh video, Introduction to Quantum Field Theory, your definitive guide which is going to guide you and help you all the necessary things that you need to know about QFT. Every physics, every mathematical theory arises out of a need and quantum field theory is not an exception. Before we go ahead and understand, the first thing that comes to our mind is that why do we need quantum field theory? Why at all there is a need for a new theory in physics and mathematics coming up in the next part of our video. As we see with human evolution, human beings start to evolve. As you can see right on this picture, Human beings started to mature and we also started worshipping the forces of nature of God. Along with that also what we started is developing hunting instruments. These hunting instruments taming the forces of nature actually marked our way and path to a civilization and human evolution. As you can see that the evolution of automobiles from 1886 then into 1980, then 20, 2010 and 2020, things evolved. Also, you can see there was an evolution in terms of living style, from the uh, caveman to the Paleolithic, then to the Neolithic age, everything actually evolved. Even the dressing sense, how it evolved through uh, human civilization and human evolution. Also, you can see that the eating style of human beings evolved. Now, am I trying to go back to the prehistoric age and teach you human evolution? No. What I am trying to tell that as automobiles, as living style dresses and the eating style evolve, so have the human brain and so have the physics and mathematical theory. As you can see here, there has been an evolution of entertainment from 1920s, the televisions that we used to see and now we are coming to the era of smart television. As we try to evolve, also we try to understand the forces of nature. So what we found is that there are a few of the fundamental forces among them. The first was gravity, the second was strong force, the third was weak force and the fourth one was electromagnetism. Now once we uh, try to understand and know these fundamental forces of nature, what we try to do is not only understand but try to find a convenient theory, a mathematical or physical theory, a single theory which would unite all those forces of nature and make us understand into a single unified theory. So gravity along with uh, what we call strong force, along with weak force and along with electromagnetism will give rise to one single grand unified theory. This is the quest of human evolution. This is a quest of the philosophical and the mathematical challenges. And yes, we have been partly successful into this, but not all. So we can say or you can understand that quantum field theory is actually this kind of an unification theory. It aims to achieve a type of unification that encompasses multiple branches of physics. So as gravity with strong and weak and electromagnetism will give us one single theory which will help us to understand nature more conveniently, quantum field theory is actually a kind of a unification theory which will encompass all the branches of physics and help us to understand. Now the next question which comes to our mind is that 
at all why do we need a unification why at all we are looking for a unification why don't we go for the separate forces of nature and thereby uh, uh, develop a theory coming up next is why do we need unification so the answer is quite simple and obvious simplicity is the target of every scientific endeavor so once we know gravity electromagnetism strong force and weak force you will see although these are very different in nature they have their own complexities they have their own mathematical formulations and they have their own specific set of rules yet one thing is very common that fundamentally they are all forces of nature now this fundamentally they are forces of nature if you can identify some of the i would say fundamental mathematical or physical phenomena then definitely we would be able to understand so the first target is to simplify the physics or the simplify the mathematical forces so as you can see gravity electromagnetism weak and strong interaction fundamental interactions are basically we call fundamental why because these interactions cannot be further subdivided that is why we call it uh, a fundamental interaction or we call is not to be reducible to basic interactions so the act of un unifying the different laws are valid for different phenomena into a single theory that will explain everything also you will see that to simplify mathematical formulation for different physical phenomena so that what we can get is one single theory that can uh, you know uh, explain everything and thereby finding a homogeneity not a heterogeneity in solutions so now we understood that with the progress of civilization how we try to unify and partly we have been successful we will come to that later and also your quantum field theory is a theory or is a endeavor towards finding a unified theory and the reason why do we need unification uh, up till this part of the video i hope it is clear that we want to simplify things and get into a simplified single theory avoiding heterogeneity and thereby finding what is called a homogeneous solutions or a homogeneity in solutions now with this we come to the right understanding or we are come to the right time that now we should define what is a quantum field theory coming up next i would like to explain very simply before we go into the mathematical complications what is quantum field theory so here is a very simple definition in theoretical physics qft or quantum field theory is a theoretical framework that combines the classical field theory special relativity and quantum mechanics so qft generally considers uh, particle physics to construct physical models of subatomic particles and in condensed matter physics to construct models of quasi particles so here you can see what i say that it is classical field theory plus einstein special relativity plus quantum mechanics all these three things take a, taken together comprises of one single field theory which will avoid all the mathematical complications and try to find a homogeneity and that is quantum field theory now here there is a small misconception which i find mostly the students making now the moment we talk about classical field theory i would like to make a note that it is a little bit different from what we called classical mechanics because you see a classical field theory is a physical theory that predicts how one or more fields in physics interact with matter through i would say field equations without considering the effects of quantization why we are not considering effects of quantization because if we consider effects of quantization then we will emerge into the realm of quantum mechanics so understand that classical field theory is predicting how one or more fields in physics uh, fields in physics interact without considering quantization so theories that incorporate quantum mechanics is called quantum field theories so in most contexts classical field theory is specifically intended to describe electromagnetism and gravitation so two these two are the fundamental forces of nature so the first field theory obviously defined by newtonian gravitation and the second one with maxwell's equation so can please do consider that classical field theory we are not considering as a whole classical mechanics we are much more interested in understanding what is field how the fields interact and how we can find these interactions through field equation 
Now you might be thinking that Einstein field equation, yes, that is one part of the field equation, but Newton's Newtonian gravity Maxwell's equations are also considered to be field equation on a classical level. This more or less defines quantum field theory as an emergence of classical field theory, special relativity and quantum mechanics. Now here comes a question that we all understood what is quantum field theory. We also understood what is unification. Why do we need in unification? Now the basic question, underlying question is that there must have been a limitation of one of the earlier theories. There has been, there has must been a way in which certain things cannot be defined and that is why we need a quantum field theory. And that is true for every physics and mathematical theory. So in this part of the video, we are going to go down and really find out the fundamental limitation of physics or all the other theories which led to the foundation of quantum field theory. And for that, I would like to start that the earliest successful classical field theory is one that emerged obviously with Newton's law of gravitation and it emerged in Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, one of the most important works of our century. Now, the force of gravity, which Newton described as an action at a distance, its effects are far away, objects are instantaneous. Fields began to uh, take on the existence of their own with the development of electromagnetism in the 19th century and Michael Faraday coined the English term field in around 1845 and he introduced fields as properties of space. The theory of classical electromagnetism was completed in 1864 with Maxwell's equations, which is right on the screen, which uh, describe the relationship between the electric field, the magnetic field, the electric current and electric charge. Earlier it was thought to be all different things, but Maxwell actually united them. Now, despite the enormous success of classical electromagnetism, it was unable to account for the discrete lines in atomic spectra nor for the distribution of black body radiation in different wavelengths. So here is Max Planck's study of black body radiation which marked the beginning of quantum mechanics and he started treating atoms which absorb and emit electromagnetic radiation as tiny oscillators. Now building on this idea, Albert Einstein proposed in 1905 an explanation for the photoelectric effect that light is composed of individual packets of energy. We go back and we start along with 1913 where Niels Bohr introduced the Bohr model of atomic structure the variant electrons within the atoms can only take a series of discrete rather than continuous energies. Uh, this is another example you can talk of quantization. In 1924, Louis, Louis de Broglie proposed the hypothesis of wave-particle duality that microscopic particles exhibit both wave-like particles properties under different circumstances. So, you, you know, all these ideas were quite scattered. I mean to say, they were quite scattered and uniting these scattered ideas, a coherent discipline of quantum mechanics emerged between 1925 and 26 with important contributions from Max Planck, Louis de Broly, Werner Heisenberg, Max Born, Erwin Schrodinger, Paul Dilak and Wolfgang Pauli and what we got is called quantum mechanics. Am I teaching you history? No. I am going to uh, understand the fundamental limitation but before that a little bit glimpse of the past is worth noting. Now in spite of all this, I mean to say development in terms of physics and quantum theory, it was unable to explain what is called a spontaneous emission. I would say the Schrodinger equation was unable to explain what is called a uh, spontaneous emission where an electron spontaneously decrease, uh, dec decreases in energy and emits a photon even without the, uh, the action of an electromagnetic field. Obviously, it is spontaneous. So we don't really need any electromagnetic field. What we need is a spontaneous emission. So from here, what we can tell is that theoretically, the Schrodinger equation could not describe photons and was inconsistent with the principles of special relativity. So as I told you, spontaneous emission is an emission of some subatomic particles where we don't need any electromagnetic field and Schrodinger equation was not in accordance with special relativity and it treats time as an ordinary number while promoting spatial coordinates to linear operators. 
that actually i would say set the stage of a new theory and what we need is called a uh, quantum field theory so the need for the new theory in spite of the uh, evolution of newtonian mechanics classical field theory niels bohr de broglie and schrodinger equation this was one of the main reasons unable to explain spontaneous emission because schrodinger equation is not in accordance with special theory of relativity now if i tell in just a few uh, uh, minute to explain to you what is a spontaneous emission imagine this to be a atom which is emitting this kind of an a photon then that photon actually gets an unlimited infinite amount of chances to go so if i want to trace back that the photon would come back and sit uh, very obediently on the nucleus being absorbed by the same atom is very low this is one considering that even if the photon is reabsorbed for example it is not guaranteed to return to the atom to its original state so if i take e2 and e1 as the two state then from going back from here to here is possible but from here to here it is not possible so photon why because a photon may have lost some amount of energy just as we get tired after a very long walk or sprinting now another position uh, uh, you know circumstance is that even if i consider even if i we consider a photon does manage to absorb the excited atom i mean to say hypothetically let us consider that it goes back to the atomic state the reabsorption process is not very instantaneous in nature now i i know that this is a little bit confusing and spontaneous emission uh, requires a little bit of more time what you can do is that you can go back to my live lecture classes and i have sp uh, spoke uh, i have uh, you know carried in detail spontaneous emission why classical theory fails in live lecture number 7 so till now what we can understand that the limitation in terms of uh, classical phenomena is basically due to the unpredictability of uh, spontaneous emission and which cannot be done through schrodinger's equation now up till now what we have understood is a quantum field theory what is the underlying reason that we need a new theory but if i consider a big brick uh, a big house or a big building or a big palace then it it is built up of certain things right now my question would be that what are the components which builds up a quantum field theory or what are the elements which actually constructs this beautiful pyramid or this wonderful edifice this structure is quantum field theory let us find out in a very easy language what are the components of quantum field theory coming up into the next part of our video the first thing which comes up which is very important by the name quantum field theory are what are called fields so qft describes physical phenomena in terms of fields most importantly which are mathematical objects that exist throughout space and time these fields represent fundamental quantities such as electromagnetic field the electron field the quark fields etc the next are particles now remember in qft particles are viewed as excitations or quanta of their corresponding fields these particles can be created or annihilated through interaction with other particles and fields which are described we will come through feynman diagrams most importantly qft is formulated using a lagrangian or hamiltonian formalism which specifies the dynamics of the fields and their interaction most importantly the lagrangian or hamiltonian density is constructed based on the symmetries and principles of the theory We, such as gauge symmetry and relativistic uh, i would say invariance most importantly yes fine mind diagrams these are graphical representation used to calculate particle interaction and scattering amplitudes in qft most importantly they are easy and provide a pictorial representation of the terms in the perturbative expansion of quantum field theory calculation yes <laughs> i like this picture that the person is removing the infinities which creates a lot uh, a lot of problem and it is called renormalization so qft encounters divergent quantities in its calculation which needs to be renormalized to obtain meaningful physical prediction so renormalization yes 
it is a mathematical procedure used to remove these naughty divergences and extract finite physical meaningful results. Symmetries plays a very crucial role in QFT and are often used to constrain the form of the Lagrangian or Hamiltonian. Uh, the vacuum state in QFT, remember it is not empty but rather a state with the lowest possible energy. It is characterized by the presence of quantum fluctuations which give rise to observable phenomena, for example the Casimir effect. So taking all these things we can say that these components form the foundational framework of quantum field theory. All the mathematics are based on that and are essential for understanding the behavior of elementary particles and the fundamental forces of nature at the quantum level. So these are the bricks, these are the uh, you know elements which constructs and builds the entire quantum field theory. Now once we have understood the bricks and the elements, one thing which is very important emerges out of that, that there are actually two parts of quantum field theory. I will just take and explain it very easily. One is called quantum electrodynamics, second is called quantum chromodynamics coming up in the next part of our video. So here is quantum field theory, quantum electrodynamics and quantum chromodynamics abbreviated as QED and QCD. So what does QED? It describes how light and matter interact and describe the interactions of charged particles with electromagnetic field. QCD is a little bit different. It is the theory of the strong interaction between quarks which are mediated by gluons. And here is this gentleman who actually found it, that is called uh, the QED formulation, it's Paul Dirac. And he was able to compute the coefficients of spontaneous emission of atom. And this was the first theory, this is the first theory which was in full agreement with quantum mechanics and special relativity. Remember that the history of quantum field actually starts with this gentleman, Professor Paul Dirac, when he attempted to quantize the electromagnetic field in the late 1920s. Here is a quick understanding of the difference between QED and QCD in a tabular format. It describes interaction of charged particles, it describes strong force. QED is interaction of charged particles and electromagnetic radiation. This is interaction between charged and uncharged particles. Here particles and EMR exchange photon. Here particles exchange gluons. This is built upon electromagnetic force. This is built upon strong force. So to summarize, we can say that QED is basically electromagnetic interactions which takes place between charged particles and QCD is describing the interaction between quarks and gluons. Now, this QED and QCD actually takes us to some of the fundamental and very fundamental concepts which we need to know before we go ahead and understand how to learn quantum field theory. Coming up next in a, I would say, a quick whirlwind tour, I would like to explain some of the key concepts of quantum field theory coming up next. The, all the elements that we see in the nature, for example, this brick, this car, this cat, <laughs> this elephant, this house, all of this uh, can be considered, I mean to say, can be uh, uh, broke down into certain elementary particles. By elementary, we mean that fundamental particle is a particle that is not made of other particles. So, the first thing is that we develop what is called a standard model that was driven by theoretical and experimental particle. Why? Because standard model is a paradigm of quantum field theory for theorists. So if I say that elementary particles, so let us assume that the first level is elementary particles, it cannot be further subdivided. This has got two parts, one is called the fermions, the second are called the bosons. Fermions comprises of quarks and antiquarks and they also comprises of leptons and anti-leptons. Bosons comprises of gauge bosons and scalar bosons. Again, I mean to say this is just a whirlwind tour I told you. Quarks can be subdivided into up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom. I am not going into those. This is a part of particle physics and leptons can be uh, divided into electron, electron, neutrino, muon, muon, neutrino, tau and tau neutrino. Similarly, gauge bosons can be divided into proton, W bosons, Z bosons and 8, some people say 9 different types of gluons and scalar bosons most popularly uh, for which Peter Higgs got the Nobel Prize called the Higgs boson. 
if we take water fermions then very easily we understand those particles which uh, actually obey fermi dirac statistics those have got a spin half like one one by two and three by two uh, these obey the pauli exclusion principle for example electrons protons and neutrons and they are basically the foundations of matter if you really want to know more about pauli exclusion principle you can find it out in the internet this is not I mean to say, I won't be explaining this further. I would go go ahead and explain you what is boson. Very famous, Satyan Bose and Albert Einstein. It is named after Bose-Einstein statistics. These have got spin integer. Fermions have got spin half. These are full integers, 0, 1, 2 and so on. Remember, they do not obey Pauli exclusion principles. These are force carriers like photons, W and Z bosons. They have got five elementary bosons. So, for example, if this one is emitting, this is called five elementary boson. Scalar bosons have got spin 0 and vector bosons have got spin 1. So, here the scalar bosons are actually the heavy boson we say that carry mass. It is called Higgs boson and vector boson are called force carriers so uh, uh, and if you want to know a little bit about quarks they are fundamental constituent of matter they are also spin half quarks combine to form hadrons mass of ordinary matter comes from two hadrons they experience all the forces of nature as I told you these are these things town top strange up bottom and charm what are leptons? They are not affected by str a strong force. They have got spin half. They experience all the three fundamental forces. Uh, examples are electron, tau, uh, tau on and muons and they are not subject to the strong interaction. So here is the difference. Quarks experience all the four fundamental forces. Leptons experience all the three fundamental forces. So there are first generation electronic leptons, second generation monic leptons, third generation tautonic leptons, uh, tau non, tau non leptons. So I won't uh, go further into this. And gauge bosons are actually acts as a carrier. So fermions are now being acted as a force which are called gauge bosons. Photons, WZ bosons, gluons are gauge bosons. Gauge bosons have spin 1 and gauge bosons are force carriers. So, photons are actually electromagnetic interaction. W and Z bosons are carried out by weak interaction. Gluons are strong interactions. And what about gravity? We really don't know. So, gravity is supposed to be thought by mediated by hypothetical particle gravitons which has not yet been discovered. And scalar bosons have spin 0 and uh, they, uh, they, they actually the scalar comes basically from what we call QFT. So here are all the fundamental interactions in a tabular form. So you can see weak bosons range 10 to the power minus 18. Strong is 10 to the power minus 15. Electromagnetic is infinite. Gravity is infinite. So gravitons that I have highlighted and marked it in red that we have not yet been found. General relativity and string theory. We are trying to find out the hypothetical particle. What is the weak force? So, weak force are actually interactions between subatomic particles that is responsible for the radioactive decay. So, it's very easy to remember. Weak force cause, causes decay and strong force actually holds and unites the elements within the atom. So, weak force, remember, is remember for nuclear fusion and fission. So, the radioactive decay, the process by which an unstable atom loses energy. So, here is the decay, then it goes into alpha decay, etc. So, the decay actually emits an alpha particles and transforms into different atomic nucleus. Beta decay also uh, emits a beta particle, transforms a proton to a neutron. Uh, it is responsible for weak force. And there is a gamma decay, which forms an electromagnetic radiation containing the shortest wavelength. So, we understood what is a standard model? What are the you know basic ideas about the particles and how do they behave? We understood what is called a weak force and now it is time to understand what is a strong force. Simple, it binds fundamental particles known as quarks. So, strong force actually confines and weak forces causes the decay. So, here is a, a schematic diagram. This, these are the proton. Uh, which are actually hold on and the neutron, these are also, uh, uh, you know, combined by what is called the strong force. And what we see that the, this is the strong force and this is how the quarks emit. And here you can see a color force that which is called a P plus and N zero and things like that. So this is just to an understanding so that you understand how things look. 
Now, there is an obvious question which might come in your mind that why it is called a strong force. Obviously, because it is 100 times more than electromagnetic force, it is 10 to the power 6 times greater than the weak force and it is 10 to the power 38 times greater than gravity. And that is why it holds things together. So, the force carrier particle of the strong interaction is what is called a gluon. And this strong force is actually, I would say, studied in what is QCD, the quantum chromodynamics. And all quarks and gluons in quantum chromodynamics interact with each other through what is called a strong force. Coming up uh, next is a quick summary, pictorial understanding. So here you see photon introduced by gamma, mass 0, spin 1. We have got a strong force, mass 0, spin 1, gluon. And we have got W and Z bosons, which has got spin 1 and spin 1. So here is all the spins, photon, gluon, W and Z boson. These have got what all? What? Positive integers. So this gives us a uh, very quick and uh, uh, I would say a basic understanding. Now this was necessary because in the coming uh, uh, part of the video, we would need this I would say what we call fundamental understanding. So this clears it up. Now taking all of these things together, you might be thinking that quantum field theory is definitely very difficult because I told at the beginning of the video that it is an untamed beast which needs to be tamed. The question is that, is quantum field theory very difficult to learn? Well, I won't answer. The next part of the video, you will get the answer. The first thing you see that it embraces a wide field of physics. So, in order to understand QFT, you need to know all those things. Classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, both the relativity, not the general part, but special relativity. You need to know calculus, group theory, wave mechanics, etc. Also, because it is very relativistic in nature, you need to know all the mathematics of Lorentz invariance, infinite energy, etc. And most importantly, you see the interactions because free fields are, are relatively easy to handle. Right. But interactions introduce terms that makes calculations much more challenging. And as I told you that the person cleaning the field with lot of infinities. So infinity, taming the infinity is also a kind of a challenge and that requires what is called renormalization. There is also a conceptual challenge because the conceptual shift introduces several challenging concepts such as quantization of fields, vacuum fluctuations, etc. Now, at this part of the video, you might be thinking that after all those difficulties, how will I go? How will I understand that I'm going to clear up in the next part of the video because I'm going to handhold you step by step in learning and understanding quantum field theory. There is another important thing that remember that quantum field theory is very much non-local in nature. Whatever mostly we study in physics are local in nature, which means that the behavior of a particle at a given point in space can be affected by particles that are far away, isn't it? That makes things much more difficult. Also, the experimental verification, because many aspects of QFT, uh, they require extremely high energy experiments, extremely pre precise measurements, which becomes difficult. And the symmetries, path integrals, non-perturbative methods makes a light our life a little bit difficult but don't worry I am going to make things much more easier. So here you see you need to identify the knowledge gaps, you need to develop those new techniques, you need to understand the method and approach and design it accordingly. So that is why if you do this quantum field theory will become a cakewalk. Now this is the reason what we call is that uh, uh, quantum field theory is difficult to learn. It is not difficult, but the process and the method needs to be uh, formal, uh, I would say, uh, formalized in a proper way. Now, having said that, the first thing that uh, comes to our mind is that what are the things we need to know? I mean to say absolute necessity, obviously quantum mechanics. You need to know classical mechanics. You need to know electromagnetism should cover Maxwell's equations, etc. And the fourth would be relativity. I mean to say the special part and the last but not the least I would say I would start with that that is called classical field theory. Now this is the most important thing which most of the students and the books I have seen they ignore. 
So coming up into the next part of the video, what I would say, what are the conceptual prerequisites? I mean to say, we will come to the books of mathematics, etc. later. But what are the conceptual prerequisites which are required? And among them, the first one is classical field theory. I will tell you why it is required and then I will tell you what are the books that you need to study. So classical field theory is a theory that predicts how one or more physical field interacts. I have seen this definition right at the beginning without considering quantization. So, the non-relativistic field theories, Newtonian electromagnetism, magnetostatics, magnetostatics, electrodynamics and continuum mechanics. And relativistic field theory, which would include Lagrangian dynamics and relativistic fields, I mean to say, which will include electromagnetism and a part of general uh, gravitation. Now, here you see, these are the particles, okay. So, we have got a physics, we have got a mathematics of understanding all those particles. Now, here you see, these particles, when they get generalized, or I would say then, when there is a shift from particles to fields, and the question is that, why? So, the first reason is that classical field theory provides a conceptual framework for how, understanding how physical fields work, right. I will to say electromagnetism, etc., and interact in the classical world. Also, the mathematical tools, uh, I mean to say the classical field theory, will teach you the most important mathematical tools, among, and among them is the Lagrangian Hamiltonian formulations, action principles, and what we call variational calculus. So, this establishes the fact that yes, we need to know classical field theory. So, one important is that it has got a historical significance because until and unless you understand the historical evolution, you will never be able to appreciate quantum field theory or rather say classical field theory. Quantization, yes, classical fields are quantized as, I, as we will see and to describe particles as excitation of these fields. Also, there is a physical intuition because classical field theory helps develop physical intuition about how fields evolve and interact and most importantly, this acts as a bridge between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics because here you first develop the idea of fields which are continuous and infinite dimensional preparing you for the leap to quantum mechanics where particles are described not as particles but as wave functions. So, we can summarize that classical field theory provides the necessary foundation in terms of concepts, mathematics and physical intuition. It is a stepping stone allowing you to build upon classical concepts and extend them into the quantum realm where fields become probabilistic and quantized. So, this actually establishes a very important, the first stepping stone for QFT would be classical field theory. Now, we come, what are the books that we would learn? So, my recommendation first would be the classical book of landau Lipschitz although people ha might have a different opinion. So, it is a complete course, right, the course of theoretical physics and it is by famous Lev Landau and written with uh, Evgeny Lipschitz uh, starting in the 1930s. So, you see these are the collection of nice books which I always feel, uh, you know, happy when I see uh, in, 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 my, in my bookshelf. So, this is the book Classical Theory of Fields, Volume 2. And as you can see, the customer reviews might be not be satisfying because 77 person has given a five star. Uh, here is a quick idea or I would say a glimpse of the chapters. You see, it starts with the principles of relativity first. Then it goes into relativistic mechanics. Then it goes into electromagnetic fields. Further, it goes into electromagnetic waves and the propagation of light. So you understand that historically and step by step, it is slowly developing. Now, here also you see the next chapter, Landau Lipschitz lights about the field of moving charges, radiation of electromagnetic waves, uh, particles and gravitational fields and so on. So, I mean to say, I don't want to go into the depth of each and every chapter or content. What I would like to say is that for some, it might be difficult. Yes, I agree to that. It requires, yes, a good amount of mathematics. It is a very cryptic and hardcore, <laughs> some people say it is a boring book. Brilliant, one of the best book, very clear and crisp and detailed. But as I told you, some of the people, they think that this is very hardcore and too mathematical in nature. The question is that this has got a mixed reactions. And my question is that, is there any alternative which gives us a more or less not that too much rigorous mathematics, but an understanding of classical field theory? 
The answer is a very big yes. And it is none other than our dear old professor Leonard Sunskind's Special Relativity and Classical Film Theory. My goodness, this is one of the best book which can be developed by any person and it cannot be developed except by Professor Leonard Sunskind. So here is the Amazon review. It gives a five star around 85%. These are some of the screenshots of what people have thought. This book is my favorite. This book is interesting and so on. We go to understand that what how the uh, you know things are being organized. So the most important part is that fields of space time principles of field theory. I've just taken up glimpses, right? The stationary action for phi waves and equations. These things are covered in quite a lot details. So here you see the mathematical interlude, covariant components, relativistic Lagrangian. I mean to say it is fantastic. I, I there cannot be a book which is even better than this so all this and they have got nice diagrams as you can see it more or less contains a uh, less amount of mathematics general calculus etc uh, absolutely an amazing book to do this is the uh, i would say content of the book so it starts with Lorentz transformation and ends with fields and classical mechanics. So in my opinion, it is a complete and easy understanding of classical field theory. It is easiest, highly recommended and a must read. And this is the first, remember, a very first step in understanding quantum field theory. Because without classical field theory, you won't be able to appreciate neither understand QFT. What is the next thing that you need to know? I mean to say as a prerequisites obviously none other than special theory of relativity now here is a point which i would like to make that when you're reading special relativity in order to know qft there are two parts one is that you get a basic idea right you know through various videos and books a basic idea of special relativity second thing is that a very specialized approach in order to understand the relativistic Maxwell equations because remember the basic idea of Einstein when he framed special relativity was to make the Maxwell's equations relativistic so if you take the second right hand side approach I think that would enormously serve the purpose my first recommendation simple would be Farooq Rahman's book special uh, theory of relativity it is super simple clear clean and has got a very clean and understanding mathematical approach here are some of the uh, i would say uh, content i think i have shown this content in many of my earlier videos the second book is interesting this is by richard e haskell's special relativity and maxwell's equation now, this is truly important the reason is that the main target of this book is to understand relativistic maxwell's equations which are again a uh, very important i would say component to understand qft so let us forget about the star but this is uh, a very important book because this would lead to the unification of uh, qft so here the book, uh, I, I mean to suggest an overview, the table of contents. It is not a very heavy book to read, but yes, it serves the purpose. You see, it is just around 150 pages, but it starts with relativistic kinematics, relativistic dynamics. So keeping in mind what you need to know about QFT. How can you ignore this fundamental concept, wave mechanics? Now, let me tell you that why this part of the physics is always ignored and why this is important. So you see that whether you are start, uh, uh, you know, studying classical physics or classical field theory or whatever, the study of waves is important because in quantum mechanics, particles can behave like waves. So this is one of the most important concepts of quantum mechanics. And how can you ignore the basic concepts of waves? Because wave particle duality, wave function, wave interferences, all of them emerges out of understanding waves. And this is the best book to learn. Students Guide to Waves by Daniel Fleisch and Laura Kinman. It is an absolutely amazing book. One of the best, one of the easiest, I mean to say, which takes into consideration absolutely no level of mathematics. Once we have understood waves, the next fundamental thing which comes is this one schrodinger equation now what is the best book again you will find millions of books i would straight away recommend to go for this because this is the easiest way to understand schrodinger equation the most important part you see is that this book makes a lot of effort in making you prepare before you go into schrodinger equation starting from vectors functions operators projection you see the schrodinger equation starts as page number 63 
but before that it makes a huge amount of effort and daniel fleisch oh my goodness is one of the best <laughs> i would say writer in physics the next would be a fourier transform and for this i have got a good amount of recommendations uh, jf james book you can go bracewell's book is also good any 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 one of these books out of this four you can do the next part which comes uh, yes this would be the first one to read this is the second the third and then the fourth the next part comes are the lagrangian hamiltonian formalism this is again an absolutely beauty to read patrick hamel's lagrangian and hamiltonians as you can see again the good part is that the book starts with framing you up letting you know the fundamental concepts like virtual and generalized force fundamental concepts calculus of variations and a lot so you can just pause the video and you can look into it so this books actually goes over the fundamentals of the calculus of variations and how it can be uh, you know used to construct mathematical sophisticated formulations and there are other advanced topics like poisson's bracket hamilton jacobi equation these are being covered now this actually right now completes our understanding i would say about the mathematical formalism i know you might be feeling a little bit restless because it's going over a long video but i really want to know your uh, i would say uh, reactions please do subscribe to my channel physics for students and put up your comment on the comment section of the video we come next to what are called the books on quantum mechanics because as you see special relativity done quantum mechanics done and then we go forward with special theory of uh, quantum field theory uh, i would straight away recommend professor leonard suskind's quantum mechanics and it would it should worth more than 66% of that and there is a reason i will tell you the book uh, i would say again it is a little bit intensive book around 350 plus pages and it, it this is the basic content of the book now you see the book is little bit i would say unconventionally organized but it is brilliant it starts with systems and experiments it starts explaining spins and qubits propositions etc and uh, what are complex numbers i mean to say that is tremendous because you need complex numbers in certain areas and functions and column vectors bra and ket and everything is being covered because this is the foundation of quantum mechanics then professor saskind goes into what is called quantum states and he goes deep down i mean to say he goes deep down to understand what is called spin states column vectors and then finally after lecture 2 he goes into the principles of quantum mechanics where he explains eigen vectors eigen values the construct spin operator so again as i always tell much more emphasis on making you prepare before going into the crux of the book then the time and change as you can see unitary and the hamiltonian conservation of energy then uncertainty and time dependent dependence lecture 6 combines the entanglements particles and waves and so on so i mean to say uh, this is a huge one so you see the time dependent and the harmonic oscillator quantum mechanical description everything and in the appendix most importantly he introduces those pauli matrices change of basis so whatever the symbols that professor saskind has used in the action of spin operators etc appendix section is also being covered so overall i can say that this is uh, i mean to say i have read to be one of the best simplest easiest explanation of uh, quantum mechanics and it is it covers classical and quantum it covers what is a system experiments spins and vector spaces the my first recommendation would be this one quantum mechanics now the second one once we mature by getting a more or less understanding of quantum mechanics would be this great person ac philips introduction to quantum mechanics this is the best book i would say to start with and here you can see this is more or less the overall content i have not given it in details it is a very intensive book a thick book and it covers more or less very good amount of quantum mechanics so it is clearly describes the mathematical relationship and most importantly what you need to know is a uh, knowledge from classical physics and you are good to go it explains and possesses clearly the appro appropriate amount of mathematics that means no exaggeration done and the quality of writing is definitely very encouraging i mean to say it will help you and it will grow interest to learn more and more about quantum mechanics i would also recommend this great person's book r shankar's quant principles of quantum mechanics i mean to say i have uh, i have actually uh, has attended few of the lectures and i mean to say he's a fabulous person great many lectures and absolutely right to the point and simple 
So quick glimpse of how the book is arranged. Again, you see the book arrays starts with mathematical introduction. So whatever the mathematics that you need to know, the first 57 pages comprises of that. Then you see it goes back to review the classical mechanics. That means say for example, <laughs> you might have forgot certain areas. So it does that. And all is not well with classical mechanics. That means the limitations. And then it goes into classical mechanics, harmonic oscillator and things like that. So I would say the level is more mathematical than I would say Griffith's book and it provides a very very strong mathematical foundation as well as a review of the intermediate classical makers. This is tremendous that it will review, make you prepare and then go into that. It contains two big chapters on prerequisites. One is the mathematical methods and classical mechanics. Now another thing is that the author discusses path integrals and symmetries early on. Now, other textbooks leave path integrals, but this book discusses early on. So, because this is the way introducing path integrals and symmetries in a much more better way. So, I mean to say, you should understand that they are not foreign concepts as they might seem to be. So, introducing symmetries actually helps uh, with always keeping the symmetries at the back of our mind. So, that is uh, absolutely great. And who can forget about this dynamic Nobel laureate, Richard P. Feynman's lectures on, uh, I would say, physics. This is, I mean, I really don't need to tell anything. This is available here and you can download that from Caltech. And it is a fabulous, one of the best, I would say, um, uh, really, I, I, no, I really don't have any words which would talk about uh, this book. Now, having learned special relativity, wave mechanics, mathematical prerequisites, classical field theory, now we come to know what are the books that we should read on quantum field theory. And as I always tell, choice is the biggest problem. So here I lay down simple two books, nothing much, nothing more about this. The first one would be Amitabh Lahiri and Polash B. Pals, a first book on quantum field theory. Uh, the uh, customer review is this one but I, I can tell you those who have read this book it is beautiful so it calls best for beginners and this is just a kind of a, a, a basic review but when I go to the depths of the book I will show you how beautiful it is so you see the first part is that various cryptic notations are being cleared so first the author two authors teach you about the notations then what are the preliminaries i mean to say and you see here the first preliminary i have been talking in this video for long it is called classical field theory and here it is then it goes to quantization of scalar fields and then it goes to quantization of dirac fields s matrix and so on so it actually shows the essence of the book shows that it is so beautifully arranged and then you can read go on reading the content it is a yeah it is a thick book around 370 plus pages and you see there is a lot of emphasis which is given on renormalization symmetries and symmetry making it covers up also yang mills theory standard electrovic theory and some of the useful formulas so what to tell about this book this is i would say the perfect first book that you should start with because it introduces Hamiltonian operators, classical field theory, and goes up to standard electrophic theory. There are very complicated areas which are eased out over here. And Dr. Lahiri and Dr. Paul takes the leaders, readers acquainted with the basics of quantum mechanics and then introduces to the sensible universe. This is important. That how do you make the reader know about quantum mechanics and then throw to the challenges. So what I would say is it is a great book for the beginners, probably the easiest to understand and get a complete understanding of quantum field theory. The second and my last recommendation would be this book, Student Friendly Quantum Field Theory Volume 1, none other by Robert D. Clubber. This is the customer reviews and more or less it is on a very positive note. Now this book is my personal favorite. Not because it speaks things easily, but most importantly, it contains a very scientific way of introducing concepts to young people. These are some of the Amazon reviews. Let us go back and understand. Now, you see in this book, uh, this is an overview, right? It starts with the table of contents. So first it is all with the preface, etc. Then it goes with the bird's eye view. 
again it establishes foundations then the spin zero fills vector so on you can have a look i'm not explaining this too much what i'm going to explain uh, more about this book so this is you know uh, more about this so it's again a very heavy book than the earlier uh, paul and lahiri's book it's a more than 500 plus pages so symmetry etc these are being covered what is most interesting is that you see when the book starts it tells you this this book is an attempt to make a learning quantum field theory and as easy and thus as efficient as is humanly possible intended first and foremost for new students and introduction below you will see it says also what it is not uh, it says that it is not orthodox it is not an exhaustive treatment it is not concise it is not written for seasoned practitioners and it is not a presentation of the latest most modern approach to it so it clearly lays down what it is and what it is not now you see also this book contains certain side notes which makes things very useful so if you are going at with a certain paragraph you will see these boxes which i have highlighted that means this paragraph talk, talks about calculate, calculating expectation value this paragraph summarizes phenomena of the theories this paragraph summarizes qft really uses spherical solution and so on and you see this one a wholeness chart this actually gives whatever you have understand in one glimpse and this makes things more beautiful because if you understand things at just one glimpse things become more of a pictorial understanding this is absolutely great each of the chapter for example spin fails or invariance will have a preliminary which will lay down what would be required the background that means what actually would be the background and the chapter review which is going to come followed by those side notes or the boxes which i highlighted which will summarize the uh, paragraph and it is true for each and every chapter there will be a preliminary background and chapter so i mean to say this actually talks about the very scientific and very rigorous way in which a book has to be framed and most importantly we are fortunate that it is a quantum field theory book so i would recommend highly recommend 10 out of 10 of this book however there are other books which i would show you in due process of time so i can say that it is a beautiful explanation one of the most difficult theories has been found out easily and after you follow this book you will be ready to do any other study and here i have written in bold this is the first book you should ever buy on this challenging subject so yes it is a highly recommended book from my side well there are other books which you can read for example willie's book on relativistic quantum field theory the famous uh, az's book on quantum field theory in nutshell there is also a good book called quantum field theory for the gifted amateur and eberhard zeidler's quantum field theory basics in mathematics and physics now this last fourth book i have talked a lot about this book on what is the best book on quantum field theory you can know more about the book the history development and a lot you can go back to my channel physics for students and you can find it in the playlist of quantum field theory so yes i understand it has been lengthy and exhaustive we come finally to summarize what we have learned so here you see we started with the need for quantum field theory the need of unification uh, what is a quantum field theory what were the limitation that arose out of that we also understand the limb components which builds up qed qcd and many of the fundamental concepts we also learned what are the conceptual prerequisites what are the books various books on special relativity lagrangian hamiltonian what are the books on quantum mechanics and some of the great textbooks which are recommended in due process of time about quantum field theory so that brings us an end to a very long video i understand but it was necessary because i really want to thank you for watching this video please do subscribe to my channel physics for students and hit on the bell icon to get all the notifications you can also write to me for contact.physicsforstudents and you can subscribe to my other channel general relativity explained you can also follow me on my facebook linkedin instagram and twitter account and most importantly on the 31st of march i'm conducting a free webinar on einstein's general theory of relativity do write to me in this email id and get yourself registered for a fascinating uh, few hours on general theory of relativity thank you very much for watching this video i will wait for your comments and do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you very much see you very soon in another video from physics for students till then May the good Lord 
be with you.